All right, guys, welcome to the channel. Today we are going to be replacing the solid state drive in this 2014 MacBook Pro. So the one that I ordered is actually from uh, MacSales.com and it will work with the MacBook Pro with Retina 13 inch and 15 inch late 2013 through mid 2015. So as you can see on this MacBook Pro, it currently has Mac OS Mojave and it actually has a 121 gigabyte solid state drive which is very full as you can see. So I went ahead and ordered the 480 gigabyte option right here just with the drive itself so I didn't order any of the uh, the tools or the upgrade kit um, so before we get started I just want to mention that I am not going to be restoring any data because I don't need the data off of this drive but if you want to uh, make sure that all your data ends up on the new drive make sure you do a time machine backup so if you have an external hard drive go ahead and do a full time machine backup otherwise you can go ahead and buy this SSD upgrade kit and it comes with an enclosure so that you can basically more or less uh, run time machine onto this drive open it up and pop it in there and go okay so the tool we're going to be using to get into the bottom of the computer is going to be this T 1.2 so it's a Torx screwdriver 1.2 so um, go ahead and once you get your time machine back up done, go ahead and click shut down. Uh, the method I'm going to be using again is I'm not going to be copying or transferring any of this data over, so I'm just going to shut it down. I don't have a time machine back up, but regardless of, of whether you're doing a time machine backup or not, you want to make sure your computer goes all the way off so I can still see the backlight on the, on the uh, Mac. So we're going to wait for this to fully shut down. Okay, now it's down. I'm going to go ahead and flip this, close the lid, and flip this over. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and remove all of the screws along the outer edge of the case. Alright, so now all of the screws are out. So if you take your finger along the back side of the screen here, there's a little lip, a little ledge. You can just grab that and this just comes right up nice and easy. Okay, so our solid state drive is right here. But before we go digging in, uh, we actually want to go ahead and uh, unhook the battery. Okay, so you can peel this little piece of plastic up right here. And this is a 2014 model, so the connector for the battery is just right here. And basically it just pops straight out, just like that. Okay, so now there's no current going through the laptop. So we're not gonna do any, any damage to any of the electronics. So here's what the new drive looks like. You don't wanna take this heat compound off of there. Go ahead and leave that on there. Grab it by the edges. Always grab memory and uh, basically this is it's a solid state drive, in it, but uh, it's it's you're going to handle it the same as memory. You grab it by the edges. You don't want to touch the gold contacts here. Okay. So we're going to switch our bits out. This is going to be a T5. So you're going to need a T5 bit to get in here, and that screw comes right out. Go ahead and place that with the other ones. Okay. And basically we're going to grab this by the edges and just kind of pull straight back this way. Okay, so if we look at this drive compared to the new one, we can pretty much tell that this has to go in the exact same way. It goes in just like this, okay? You can tell that because this side is just slightly longer than this side. It's keyed slightly differently. So if we take a look at that, you see this side is keyed slightly longer. So we'll go ahead and grab this by the sides. We're just gonna slowly start pushing it in. Okay. So it's got a little bit of resistance pushing in, but 
it's in and I can tell because the screw hole is perfectly lined up here. So we're going to go ahead and work the screw in now. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and plug our battery connector back in. Just push it straight back down in. Put that little tape back over. We're going to place the bottom panel back on. I'm going to switch back over to our T1.2 drive. The way I like to put these little tiny screws back in is to actually place the screw on the bit, then hold my finger over the screw like this, and it kind of holds it into place and allows you to press it right down in and put it in. So I'm going to do the four corners first when I'm putting these screws back in, so that way I get all of I make sure that every corner is aligned properly. Okay, now we have everything plugged back in. So before I plug the power adapter in, we do want to use the power adapter anytime we're doing anything like this. But before I plug the power adapter back in, I do want to turn the computer on just to make sure that it comes on from the battery, just to make sure that the battery was properly attached. So what I'm going to do is press the power button and then I'm going to press and hold command option R. Okay, so right after I hear the bong, command option R, this starts internet recovery. You can let go now, and then you can plug your power adapter in. Okay, the first thing we need to do is go into disk utility. So select disk utility and click continue. This loads up our drives. So this is the new drive here, the OWC Aura Pro 10. So the first thing you need to do is format that. So you're going to click erase and you're going to choose, um, mine's already been formatted, so I'm not going to go ahead and reformat it, but you're actually going to choose Mac OS journaled. So it's not in the list here because I've already formatted mine. So click again, you're going to go ahead and choose Mac OS journaled, and then you can name it whatever you want and then click erase. So again, I've already, I've already done mine, so um, I'm not going to redo it, but once you finish formatting it, it goes real quick. Go ahead and quit Disk Utility, and then you're going to click on Reinstall Mac OS. Okay, so inside of here, you're going to just click Continue, and it's going to reinstall your Mac OS. Basically, what this is going to do is it's going to download and install Mac Mojave, and then whenever you boot it for the first time, it's going to ask you if you want to restore your data from a Time Machine backup. So if you did a Time Machine backup, just make sure you're plugged into your MacBook with your drive, and then choose Restore Data from a uh, backup. Otherwise, you can do like I did, and um, basically I had no data on the Mac already. This is, you know, this was just a computer that was given to me, so I didn't really have any data on there. So. Um, it booted up and all I did was just set it up like it was new, signed into my iCloud account and all that good stuff and installed a couple programs. Okay, so here we are. We're booted in to the Mac now with Mac OS Mojave and we'll click about this Mac and here we go. We can see all that. We'll go to storage. Now we can see I have a 480 gigabyte solid state PCI Express drive. So 450 gigs free because I've been, like I said, I've already uh, formatted this prior to and I've got like Office and a couple other things installed. So we got a write speed of 814 megabytes a second and a read speed of 1047 megabytes per second. So on my phone, this is a screenshot that I did with the old SSD. 313 write versus 716 read. So we went from 313 megabits per second to anywhere in the 7 800s 
and read uh, speeds of 716 megabytes per second to 1041. So that's uh, pretty good. And I will say I've been using this laptop today. Um, you know, I don't notice anything bad as far as speed goes, but I will say compared to the OEM uh, flash drive that I took out, um, this has zipped through battery a lot faster. So that's just one thing to keep in mind. Uh, there's a good chance that if you replace your SSD that your battery is going to drain faster. So uh, be weary of that if, if that's something that you think is going to be an issue for you. But otherwise, um, you know, just plug it in and enjoy more storage space. For me, to make this computer even worth my time of using, I definitely had to upgrade the SSD because 121 gigabytes was just not enough. So that's how you're going to upgrade your 2013 through 2015 Retina MacBook Pro uh, solid state drive. All right, guys, thanks for checking out the video. I hope that this helped you out. If it did, please do me a favor and like and subscribe to the channel because that'll help me out and that'll keep you in the loop on any of my future videos that are coming out. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. And as always, we'll see you guys in the next video.